Hey everyone, my name's Allison Moscato, inviting you to join me as I travel to wineries across the country in search of stories. These stories may involve the history of the people or families or the wine region itself. While trying to find us wines, unveiling these stories, I welcome you to the wine life. I'm at Atwater Estate Vineyards, and with 17 different grape varietals, I'm excited to start my wine story here at this majestic estate. Atwater Estate Vineyards, located on the southeastern hillside of Seneca Lake in the Finger Lakes. This winery goes back to the early 1900s, when native variety grapes like Catawba and Concord were widely grown. In 1970, it was purchased by a Minnesota newspaper man and wine entrepreneur, Bill Muffet, creator of Vineyard and Winery Management magazine. He began planting French-American hybrids and Vitis vinifero grapes such as Chardonnay, Marechal Falk, and Saval. By early 1980s, Muffet had sold the land to locals Ed and Joanne Grow, who opened Rolling Vineyards Farm Winery. Ed continued to plant more grape varieties, including Riesling, Gewürztraminer, and Vidal Blanc. In 1989, local entrepreneur Ted Marks purchased the already established vineyard and Atwater Estate Vineyards was open in September of 2000. This vineyard continues to develop an acreage, including Riesling, Pinot Noir, and Cabernet Sauvignon. Currently planted with 17 different grapes, they continue to experiment with other grape varieties such as Syrah, and Lemberger. Well, my wine making journey started about 20 years ago on Long Island. Uh, I'm originally from the New York City area and I had a, a friend in college whose family was in the wine business uh, on Rhode Island and that coupled with some home wine making experience as, as a kid growing up in Queens, uh, it, it uh, piqued my interest to pursue uh, winemaking possibilities. I approached some wineries on Long Island. Next thing I knew, I was uh, working in a cellar and, uh, and the vineyards at Wolfer Estate, which is on the south fork of Long Island. So uh, I got my foot in the door and spent three, three uh, harvests on Long Island learning the trade, learning the, uh, from the from hands-on um, winemaking 101. After that uh, stint on Long Island, uh, we moved upstate to uh, pursue the possibilities in the Finger Lakes. Uh, the region was, was very uh, uh, new to us. We were not familiar with the Finger Lakes, but we realized the potential uh, of the region um, held, and uh, I was hired at Herman Weimer uh, for the fall uh, of 2000. I spent the vintage there, uh, and then quickly in 2001, I was uh, actually hired across the lake here at Atwater Vineyards, where I'm still a uh, full-time head winemaker and um, en enjoying the, uh, the uh, relationship I have with the owner here, Ted Marks. Uh, Ted Marks hired me in 2001, and uh, this, is a, this farm is one of the most uh, unique and, and uh, I'd say, um, preeminent vineyards in the Finger Lakes because of its, ex its exposure uh, to, the, to the west, to the west, to its sloping vineyards, its proximity to the lake, uh, and um, it's, a, it's, a unique, it's a unique place to make wine. So I've had a very good experience here uh, over the years. So this is really the nerve center of, of our operation. Uh, once the grapes are come in during harvest, um, they're processed, and then this room that we're standing in right now um, is really the aging room. So the wines now are uh, filtered, uh, they're, they're through fermentation, they're filtered, and they're just cold stabilizing they're, and, and aging, if you will, right now. So whether it's in the barrels or in the tanks, they are um, sort of on deck for bottling. Okay, so Vinny, you showed us the winery and actually stainless steel barrels. We're at the bottling line. Yeah. What's going on here? Yeah, so this is our bottling room. Uh, we spend probably 40 days a year in here um, bottling you know, roughly 10,000 cases of wine. So on any given day, we can, we can move around 500 cases of wine through here. Uh, so it's completely auto automated. Mm -hmm. The glass is loaded on this end. It runs th through the, uh, through the, the, the track, down the track, into our filling 
station and there's eight spouts here so the bottles move through the the filler uh -huh. each filler drops its its filler head onto the bottle fills appropriately then it moves on to the corker uh, the corker hopper will drop a cork into each bottle mm -hmm. moves down the track and then down the track it will receive a capsule okay. uh, whether it's tin or plastic or, or combination of the two we have hybrid capsules and then it's either spun on or shrunk on okay then down the track it continues and it gets the label um, that runs through that series of, of posts uh, into the uh, to the end where the wines are collected uh, boxed up palletized okay. Um, and uh, you know, then put into a warehouse. So wow. we were just in the um, tasting room for stainless steel barrels. Now we're seeing all the wooden barrels. Yeah. What do you got down here? Yeah. So this is the room where our wines uh, end up after they're crushed and pressed. Uh, Chardonnay, uh, all our reds um, end up in, in barrels for the aging process. Mm -hmm. This is where they develop um, in the barrels. They, they're micro oxid oxygenating in the barrels, they're developing uh, their complex flavors and, and sort of mellowing out. Um, and usually it's an eight or nine month period of time just before um, the, the next harvest. Uh, so come this August, uh, they'll, be being, they'll come out of barrels, we'll start blending, and then we'll, we'll uh, start bottling. Start some yummy wines, right? Yeah, here's hoping. <laughs> um, now, barrels. Barrels are a big thing when it comes to reds. What kind of barrels are you using? French, Hungarian? Yeah, yeah, so we use an assortment of American, French, and Hungarian, depending on the varietal. Mm -hmm. uh, most of our Pinot Noir is in French, uh, our Syrah goes into Hungarian. So depending on the flavor of the wine mm -hmm. and the, the sort of the character of the barrels, we try to match them up and uh, uh, to sort of uh, support and accentuate the, the flavors of, of those wines. And uh, the, you know, the idea is to make the wines more lively, more uh, interesting, okay. and, you know, more now, tasty. Yeah. All right, give me an example now. Chardonnay. Yeah. You have what kind of characteristic when it comes to what um, barrel you're using? Right. You so I'm, I will add, though, that we don't tend to use too many new barrels because okay. new barrels can be very aggressive. Um, but still, uh, a three- or four-year-old barrel has plenty of life and plenty of character. Mm -hmm. So in the case of Chardonnay, uh, we may use a French barrel because they tend to impart a vanilla character okay. or a, maybe a sweeter character, uh, and that pairs up nicely with... Uh, the apples and pears uh, that are typical in Chardonnay. Hmm. Now, your style mm. of winemaking, let me explain. Yeah, I, I approach winemaking in a very sort of very uh, holistic way. I try not to, to get in the way of the wines. I want, to I want the wines to express themselves. Uh, so I, I'm very concerned about maintaining freshness and integrity in the wines, um, making wines that are long-lived and are, are great food companions. Wow. I'm here with Ted Marks, the owner of Atwater Estate Vineyard. Now, Ted, tell me about the history here. I mean, you've been here for a while. Well, not that long. Uh, we uh, bought, <clears throat> bought the business in uh, 1999. Okay. Uh, we weren't going to buy it to 2000, but the owner who was selling it called us up uh, in uh, October and said, if you guys will close in uh, 30 days and pay me, Okay. We'll give you the grapes. <laughs> that's so we, awesome. we absolutely said yes, and it was very important because that's what all we were buying really was a vineyard, and that gave us the grapes one year earlier, mm -hmm. so we could uh, start selling one year sooner and now, help with the income. So that, that helped a lot and got us started off to a good start. Yeah. Now, how many grapes did you have at that time? Well, there are 80 acres here on the farm. Okay. Uh, about. 45 were planted then, 40 to 45, and we now have about 50 to 55 acres of grapes on the farm. Mm -hmm. We're constantly, not constantly, but every year you take out three or four acres maybe mm -hmm. of the older style, the Niagara's and the Catawba's, and mm -hmm. take those out, the native grapes in other words, and turn them into vinifera grapes, Riesling, Cabernet Sauv, Merlot, Blau Frankish. Now, I mean, with all these wines, the labels are important, the advertising is important. I mean, these are beautiful. It's incredible what you're doing. Um, is there any specific way, I mean, that you advertise? That would be, I mean, these bottles are incredible. Well, no, most of this are wine, us 
wineries on Seneca Lake were small. Okay. We don't do a lot of advertising because ho- how do you hit? You know, your people are coming from out of town and everything else. What we do is, mm-hmm. number one, we all work together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we form the Seneca Lake Wine Trail, mm-hmm. which advertises it's a whole for everybody because it's hard to, to reach. You, we have people coming from everywhere. Okay. So it's hard to reach them. Mm-hmm. So as far as the design goes, uh, Almost all of these were ourselves. We did it in-house. Okay. Uh, my daughter, uh, my, my daughter Anne, who was involved with the winery in the very beginning, uh, she and I designed this particular label, which is the the grape, the, the grape and the and the Atwater logo, mm-hmm. and that's our standard logo on almost all. It's all it's silk screened, oh, wow. as opposed to a paper label. Mm-hmm. This being a paper label, this label was designed by. Basically, Denise up in our, in our office staff. Okay. Uh, this was also designed by Denise. Okay. The uh, the Celsius and the Fahrenheit were drawn by my daughter Katie. Wow. So we all it's all family. It's fair. all family fair. I like yeah. this. I like the family the family orientation on it. All. Yeah, well, that's what that's now, what's all about. people have told me the regerts. Reverts. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Not regerts. Re- that sounds sickening. <laughs> <laughs> so the reverts. Yep. Okay. How'd you come up with that name? Well, it, it's a reasoning and okay. it's a reverse meter. So you just combined them. So it combined it came awesome. with reverts. So fun. And it worked out perfectly. Yeah. It really did. Yeah. Now cool. explain that why. Is it so? Is it fifty-fifty? Pardon? Is it a fifty-fifty? Um, um, yeah, I think it is. Okay. I, I can't tell you exactly. That's I don't okay. remember. That's well. That's the winemaker's job. <laughs> that's you okay. Know. Vinny told me. <laughs> I, I just drink it. So. Uh, but Okay, everybody. So I'm with the tasting room manager, Amanda Gumto, right? Correct. Okay. And we're taking me through all of these amazing wines right here. Amanda, what we got started here first? Just doing a kind of a, a sampling um, of what we have. We specialize in more drier style wines okay. here. Um, but we have a smattering of some sweeter selections too. But I was going to highlight a, a couple of wines that the area is really known for. Sounds good so, to me. That's, yeah. Great. Let's get started. Wonderful. Well, you always hear about Riesling in the area, and we make some beautiful Rieslings. Mm-hmm. Um, our farm has nine different blocks of Riesling on the farm. They're in different soils and they're in different, uh, they're different clones of Riesling. So those soils and the different clones impart different flavors. Okay. In the past, we have always just kind of done a field blend and blended them together. And in 2014, our winemaker, Vinny, wanted to kind of start experimenting them um, on their own. So he made four different dry Rieslings and each one has a unique flavor to it. So I'm going to pour the two that we have left right now for you so you can see the difference and, and what a little bit of soil and, and can do. It sounds good to me, man. Okay. So the first one I'm pouring is um, our dry Riesling. Okay. Now what year is this? This is their um, 2014. Okay. And it's from our East West block, ah. which is a block that um, is about halfway down our site on our north farm, okay. and it's by our pond. So, so then what what do they do in, in like in relation to the lake and everything like that? Well, the, they in in terms of the weather and, and yeah. how everything hits them, yeah, I know they're, they're gonna get you know <laughs> they're gonna get you know this the same treatment from the the weather and the air drainage and all of that. But again, it's more the soil site. Okay. Um, and, and the clone of grape, and even the age of the grape, um, how long they were planted, um, imparts different flavors to it. So the east-west is in your glass there. Now this is just absolutely intense with so much fruit flavors and the dry, crisp note to it. Mm-hmm. Am I smelling pear in that too? Lots of citrus, lots of pear, yep. <sighs> Oh my God! I wish you. Could, I wish there was like a, a scented camera for you guys. That's smell vision. That's exactly right. Yeah. This is and even kind of like a little, amazing. a little slatiness. Yes. A little minerality. That's that's what um, I like. Yeah. But not overpowering. No, very light. <sighs> the fruit forward, definitely. But then you get the dry kick right in the back. So typically we have a number of Rieslings on our list just because, again, it, it, they grow really well here. Um, but one that we've been doing for a number of years that's really super fun is our Riesling Bubble. Wait, wait, wait. A 
Riesling bubble. Riesling bubble, just like it sounds. So it's not a sparkling wine. Okay. It is, um, but it's lightly carbonated. Uh -huh. So we make it as a still wine. It has this really fun screw cap on, so you yeah. can just open it and enjoy. Open it. We make it, like I said, as a still wine, and then we pressurize it right before we bottle it. It gives those really fine bubbles, a little effervescence. There you, know. you go. This is my is campfire Italian hangout like wine. There you go. <laughs> In the summer, we do. Um, Bellinis on the deck, so we'll take this. We take some fresh peaches from the area or any fresh fruit. I was waiting. I was muddle like, it and then just add a there, little yeah. splash. Yep. No, definitely sweeter. Definitely more fruit forward. Melon. Mm -hmm. Melon and citrus. Oh, oh, Amanda. What? Yeah, this and again, so cool. bubbles, right? Yeah. What is it? Italian and uh, it's uh, frizzante? Frizzante. There you go. Frizzante. Mm -hmm. There's the bubbles. There's a the tongue. Yep. Yep. Just light and yeah, on a nice yeah, summer fun. day. Fun, happy. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> nice cold glass of that. That's awesome. That, that's yeah. a wonderful wine. And sweet, too. So if any of like, sweet yeah. styles. Not super sweet, but definitely more it's sugar exactly. than the last yeah. two. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yep. So it, it pleases uh, drier drinkers and a little bit mm -hmm. sweeter drinkers yeah. as well. Four for you. Mm -hmm. It's the first time we've done this blend. Okay. Um, typically... Um, we don't have a straight varietal Cabernet Sauvignon um, or Merlot just because they're very low on our um, very small yield that we get off of our farm and we usually blend those two together. We didn't have enough Merlot so we actually tried it with a Syrah so we did a Cab Saf Syrah. Again you get that pepper, you get that fruit. Yeah. Um, and it's, it, this has really been changing um, over the last couple months you know as, as it ages in the uh -huh. bottle. and. Um, no, we're on our last little bit. So this is also a um, 2014. Okay. So the only one, the rosé and the Cab Franc were different vintages, but okay. everything else is 2014. So. Cabernet and Syrah blend. Cabernet and Syrah blend. Wow. Yep. All right, so you're kind of expecting to have the spicy cake and with the Syrah, mm -hmm. the black pepper with the Cab. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, yep. let's try this. Yep. Oh, nope, there it is right there. There's that spiciness. I'm ready. And again, you're still getting a lot of cherry. You're still getting more of the, the dark fruits now, too. The darker. Yeah. They play well together. You know, I, w I was very curious when um, we bottled this because, I, again, I was used to more of the um, Cabernet Mer Merlot blend where you had the mm -hmm. spice, but you had the fruit that were melding together, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of playing off each other. And this one is a little bit more spice, and, and you still get the fruit, but it's a different dynamic than I was used to, and it's, I really love it. This is what, yeah, it's going through my head. I'm like, I, I'm not used to this kind of uh, mm -hmm. combination when trying wines. This right. is not something you see. Um, but mm -hmm. it is intense and it has the best nose, um, mm -hmm. especially if you, any of you, actually love um, Syrah and you actually want to see a good Cabernet Syrah blend yes. that you don't normally see. This mm -hmm. is, this is without, without a doubt amazing. Yeah. Wow. Let's go back for another one. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. So incredible. Well, Amanda, I want to say thank you so, so much. You guys, for six for six on the wines, I say come down to Atwater Estate and try some wines because Riesling, and yes, I said bubbly Riesling too, um, and then their Cab Syrah is a blend you don't ever see, which is just amazing. Thank you again, Amanda. I appreciate Thanks. it. Well, that's it for this wine story. Stay tuned for future episodes as I locate more wineries on The Wine Life. Well, that's it for this wine story. I'm on to find my next. Stay tuned for more episodes as we locate more wineries. I want to mess up again. So we're going to stop. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, sorry.